What's going on everybody? Back with another video. Today we're going to be working on, decided to go ahead and work on the Mazda 3 a little bit. Okay, so here we're at the car and I'm going to be unboxing, well, I guess I've already opened up the envelopes, but I'm going to be pulling them out and actually showing you what those bolts and stuff looks like. The things I was telling you about in the last video about when uh, needing to, when, when you're wanting to turbo your car to make sure your car is not getting too much oil to the turbo, causing it to smoke and all that stuff. So here's the first, here's the first one. It's a banjo bolt kit, so what it looks like. Boop, boop, boop. Pretty simple, see? So this part here actually will screw into the turbo. So it goes into your turbo. This right here has a uh, little washers on both sides. So you just slide that on through. Of course, make sure you don't pull here. Pull lines up there, right? Put that over like that. And then just screw the nut on the other side. Or, or, I'm, or you screw your hose on to this side right here. So this goes into your turbo. Your oil line will actually feed into this right here. Okay, so this area right here is what, I'm, is what we're going to be working on today. So we're actually going to be taking this piece off and installing that banjo that I was telling you about. So all, all we're going to be basically be doing is unscrewing this right here and pulling it out of the turbo. And then we're going to be installing the banjo. The banjo will screw into there and the end of the... We got it off. That's, that's the original piece along with that big other long piece that you don't need. So ignore that okay so after you get this piece screwed into your turbo you will slide this bad boy into it like so put this over in that oil line that I took off before it just screws it right on and bam you're good to go you got your restrictor in and your turbo will be pop will be uh, it's just a cloak. getting the correct uh, oil that it's supposed to get hopefully we'll find out Part of the problem we're having right now is the bolt that goes through the uh, hole that you connect to your oil line does not meet. Well, it, it's it's we're not able to tighten the bolt to the turbo because the bolt is hitting the uh, the turbo itself. So we're going to try to work around that and see see what we can do with that. Okay, as you can see, we're under the car now. <laughs> so you're probably wondering why we're under here instead of, I don't know, up top. But what I'm going to do to be able to get this oil line to go on, the restrictor like it's supposed to, is we're going to take the oil line apart down here at the sandwich plate, which gives me a good time to show you all the sandwich plate since I didn't get to show you that in the last video. So, here is the oil filter and everything. So, you got that right there. And this right here, that's your sandwich plate. So, pretty much it goes between your oil filter and the engine. That little X, gold X thing, yeah, that's the feed line. It comes out of that sandwich plate and runs up to the top of the engine. So, we're actually going to undo that because it'd be a lot easier to hook that back up versus trying to hook the bolt up up top and this pipe that I got my hand on right here this is part of the intercooler piping that I was telling you about how it comes down through here and then it just kind of runs around the radiator and then this right here 
Oh look, there's some gasket maker just hanging out. And then yeah, you got your radio here, your uh, intercooler right here. So I got my oil line off. Here it is. And the thing with this oil line is that it's it's cheap and it's eBay. It's cheap in eBay. It's cheap in eBay. I, I can't think of anything else to say that. So this end actually screws into your sandwich plate underneath the thing where I just showed you before. And this end is supposed to screw in up here onto the turbo. But as you can see, it's all loose, it's janky. And I'm thinking about not using it because I have this strange feeling that it's going to, I don't know, crap out on me after I get it together. So, the good news is, I know what ends that I need because I know this will screw into my uh, sandwich plate like it's supposed to. Okay. And this, eh, not so much, but I know the end that I need. Ha, because this is my restrictor. So what I'm going to do is try to find a place that can make me a new line. And also make this, I don't know, about three inches longer because it's almost too short. That's part of my problem. I tried to make it reach. And even if it, it does kind of reach, except for the fact that this doesn't like to screw into this because it's not really the right fitting. So... We're kind of stuck right now. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. So we're going to put this on hold from right here for right now. I'm not worried about this part anymore. And uh, until we get a new line made. Okay, so since that was kind of a bust, bummer. But don't worry, I'll be getting that fixed and I'll be showing you exactly how I put that back together. But anyway, I can go ahead and show you the other thing that I talked about, which is the no weld plug for your oil pan. Now, I'm curious to see how this works, and for those of you that have used these before, please comment below and let me know what you think, because I've read several reviews on these, and a lot of people have given them pretty good reviews. I was really kind of shocked on how well it actually reviewed for something that people are completely against. So, pretty much, this is what it looks like with everything apart. It comes with two washers with like little rubber gaskets in the middle of it there. And so you got this, and you got this, that, and the other. Okay, so your oil pan. Of course, you're going to want to find the highest part in your oil pan. When I take mine off, I'll show you where I did mine at. It may not be the best place for them. Y'all might, might be like, why'd you put it there for? But, you know, whatever. So you, after you drill your hole, this part here, the smaller part, the part that this nut came off of, okay, so... You're going to put your one of your washers in like that. It'll slide into your oil pan, and then on the other side, you put your other washer on, and then you just tighten her down. Boop, 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 boop. Tight down, tight as you can get it, and voila, there you go. Your return line. That's your return line fitting, of course, and you just put your return line on, and bam, you're good to go. So this is a great option for if you can't weld yourself or find anybody to weld your oil pan for you and I think this thing was only like 12 15 bucks if that I can't remember it was, this was off eBay this is an eBay one this, this is I didn't think something like this I needed to spend a lot of money on I mean it's not one of those parts that I was like yeah maybe I should I don't know but anyway so just let me know below what you all think of it and if that's something that you've done before and uh yeah that's going to be probably next week's video just keep watching out for that we're going to get the oil pan remove the oil pan off and as you saw in the last video all that nasty jb weld and gasket maker and all that stuff that i tried to make it work and it, it did not it was a big fail so if you haven't watched that video i'll leave a link below to where you can go back and watch last week's video of of just going through the Mazda 3 a little bit. My Mazda Speed 3 is like I like to put it. So, so for next week's video, we're going to work on getting the oil pan pulled off and we're going to work on getting this little bad guy put on, going to get that oil line fitting put in and 
while we have the car up in the air, we're going to go ahead and examine the starter wire to see if that's the issue for, for as for or the reasoning why it's not starting. Because right now, you turn the key, it does nothing. And apparently with these cars, the starter wire likes to corrode. So that's something that I'm going to check into and see if that's what it is. I, the starter could be out, but I don't know. But anyway, I am going to work on just uh, getting it cleaned up a little bit too and uh, go from there. Oh yeah, and um, hopefully we get uh, this garage cleaned out sometime soon and actually turning into a real garage. But right now, we're going to go mow the yard. You want to come with me? You know you want to. I feel like a pilot. <laughs>